What's going on guys? Welcome on over to another episode of Detail College. Today I'm going to be showing you how to foam can and wash your vehicle or your customer's vehicle. Here I'm working on my client's Nissan Altima and before we get into any paint correction or sealant application, we're going to have to properly wash this vehicle. So here I'm using my pressure washer to thoroughly rinse the vehicle down and this is very effective as my pressure washer puts out around 3000 PSI. It's a Ryobi with the Honda engine and you can pick one up at Home Depot for around $300. My particular pressure washer is hooked up to my water tank in my mobile van through a gravity feed and this provides plenty of water pressure for your initial rinse. The purpose of this initial rinse is to remove all loose dirt and debris from the vehicle. It's very important to rinse inside the wheel wells as you see me doing here as well as the rims because this is going to make our wheel cleaning process much easier. This initial rinse is also going to minimize the impact any embedded dirt will have on the paintwork when we begin our foam cannon wash process. Once you finish up with your initial rinse, what we're going to do is go ahead and foam can and wash the vehicle. Here I'm using the Torque Foam Cannon attachment from Chemical Guys, as well as Honeydew Snow Foam. My dilution ratio in the cannon is about 3 parts soap to 1 part water, and as you can see we have a nice thick foam. The purpose of this is to really soften up the dirt and embedded contaminants on the vehicle, so that when we go to scrub the paintwork, we're at less risk of marring or scratching the paint. I typically leave the foam on for about 1-2 to two minutes to make sure all of the dirt is loosened up and soft. Once the vehicle is fully foamed down, I'm going to go ahead and grab my microfiber wash mitt. This one in particular is from Chemical Guys, and I prefer to use microfiber mitts to wash the vehicle as it's soft enough that it won't harm the paintwork and it will actually pick up the dirt and grime without rubbing it back into the paint. Also off camera I have my two buckets, my rinse bucket with my cyclone dirt trap for rinsing off the mitt, as well as my wash bucket for applying clean soap and water to the mitt and placing it back onto the paintwork. So on the opposite side here, most of the foam has run off, so I'm going to go ahead and give it another light foaming, just to make sure we have a nice lubricated surface to use with our wash mitt. I just like to make sure all areas are covered with soap when I'm washing, because especially on a black vehicle, there's a large risk of marring the paintwork, so I like to be as safe as possible. I always put the windshield wipers up when I'm washing the windshield, because you're able to get in all of the areas underneath, and this is going to go a long way when we get to our glass cleaning step. I'm not going to touch the wheels just yet. We don't want to cross contaminate our microfiber wash mitt with brake dust, so I typically do a foam on rinse off with the wheels to start before I get into my wheel cleaning process. As you can see here I'm putting my hand behind my back and this is always good practice to make sure you're not putting your hand on the paintwork and potentially scratching it. Our natural reaction is to rest our hand on the vehicle during the wash process, but that can be detrimental to the paintwork. So once you finish up washing all areas of the vehicle, you're going to go ahead and put your pressure washer attachment back on your gun and begin rinsing down the vehicle. You're going to want to rinse the vehicle from top to bottom, as this will allow the runoff to make our rinse process much more efficient. We don't want to have to rinse any part of the vehicle twice, that's why I start at the roof and make my way down. You really want to make sure you get into the crevices, like in the gas cap, in the door handles, and in the mirrors as soap will hide in there and we don't want any dried soap left on the vehicle when we go to dry it. So 
once the vehicle is fully rinsed, that pretty much concludes our wash process. In the next episode, we're going to get into proper rim and tire cleaning and further decontamination. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.